Good afternoon. Um, first, I want to welcome, right now, I'm at the school of giving, giving the chair at the Boston Call, so I want to welcome um, those who are in attendance. Um, so if you could just remind me your name. What's your name? Naftali Ax. I'd like to welcome Naftali Ax. That's like, what year are you? Ninth grade? Um, Maji? Yeah. Maji Fantak? Yeah. Yakov. Yeah, I'm sorry. And, and you're Maji. Very nice. Um, and I want to welcome on the screen by Chavrusa, Suli Picard from Cambridge. Suli and I learned Misaka's condition together. Welcome. Um, welcome, welcome my grandmother, and I welcome, welcome my father. So, um, today, as a shame, we're going to be covering some Hilchus Cholamoid. Many people say that Cholamoid is a very unknown topic. Just so that we're on, all on the same page, Cholamoid is the days in between the first days of Yontif and the second days of Yontif of Pesach and Sukkot, the what's called the intermediate days, which have different halachos, different rules than um, than Shabbos and Yontif, the festivals. Um, so we're going to explore what are some of the halachos of Cholamoid. So first off, um, what's what exactly is, is the purpose why we have Cholamoid? So there's, there are a few shitas. There's the Ritva and the Rambam. So the Ritva's shita is that Chazal wanted to make sure that on Cholamoid we have Simcha Sancev. So, for example, if if we would suffer a loss that would truly be on our minds and would make us be worried and concerned, like, oh no, my field is getting flooded. So even though on Shabbos and Yontif we would not tend to the fields, but on Cholamayid, Chazal were makbed and some Yontif, so they allowed us to take care of the fields. The Ramam holds, it's really just that, like, some, Chazal wanted Cholamayid to be not exactly like a weekday and not exactly like a Yontif, so... Some malachas are permitted and some malachas are prohibited. Some are mutter, some are aser. And Chazal just chose some to make mutter, some to make aser. Um, there's a big machlekes in Hilchot Salamayid as far as whether the malachas are dereis or derabanam. So it's a, it's a big shayla. If a person has, the nafimid is if a person has a suffix, is this allowed on Yontif or not? Is this allowed on Cholamoid or not? So if the halachas of Cholamoid are Daraisa, they're from the Torah, then the rule is Suffolk Daraisa Lachumra. A rule from the Torah, we have to be stringent. And we can't do it. But if the rules of Cholamoid is only Darbanon, then it's a, if the Suffolk, then we would be allowed to do the Suffolk Darbanon Lachula. So just to start off, before we get into the malachos, um, and as we go through, um, certainly anyone who has any shilas that came up this Cholamoid or any other auras, any questions, certainly feel free to speak. Um, there's some, before we get into the malachos, meaning when we talk about malacha, we're talking about the 39 malachos that are prohibited on Shabbos. Like, um, like detaching, building, sewing. But they're also on Shabbos, there are many durabanans, there are rabbinical enactments that we're not allowed to do. So some of these we are allowed to do on Cholamoid. One of them is making a kenyan. So if a uh, if person goes to his friend a cholamoid wants to give him a gift, uh, gives him some some macaroons for Pesach, so this would be allowed to to make a kinyan to make a transaction. Moving mukta, person has some mukta left on the table is allowed to move it. Um, speaking of business matters, if we stay all the way to the end, maybe we'll talk a little about what we're supposed to do on cholamoid, but. I'm not passing, this is necessarily the best use of one's cholamoid, but it is mutter meikar hadin to talk about business on cholamoid. If a person, so there's an interesting article in the Wall Street Journal about President Biden's foreign policy and it stimulates a lot of discussion, this discussion is permitted on cholamoid. Um, also, preparing for Yantav person, I want to say, I'm going to do this malacha like next Next week, I'm going to drive to Lakewood. I'm going to I'm going to drive to Yeshiva in Lakewood. That would be allowed, even though on Shabbos, we would not talk about what malachas we do after Shabbos. And some of the Durbanans on Shabbos are prohibited. Some are not allowed. Like one is malacha with a shinui. Just like on Shabbos, we're familiar if a person does a malacha, does a forbidden activity, but does it in some unusual way, he changes the form or changes the outcome, then it's not a daraisa, it's only Durbanan. 
but on Cholamo, it's still, if a person is doing a, a malacha with truly no purpose, and he just does it with a shinoi, this is not allowed on Cholamo. Also, if a person has work to be done by a non-Jew, and it doesn't fit in any of the categories of permissibility, then this is not allowed to be done. Um, I want to mention that I'm, most of my learning is from the Sefer called Shloshim Yom Kodam Achag. This is a Sefer that can be found in the stores. It's by Rabbi Dekman from Lakewood. Um, he goes through a lot of the halachas of Cholamoid and also the other Moedim. So this is what the Sefer looks like. Um, so for, we'll summarize the seven main categories of Hetzer, meaning the general the general rule, the starting point for Cholamoid is that all malacha, all of the 39 activities that are not allowed to be done Shabbos are also not allowed on Cholamoid. But there's a big but. There are seven categories, and if something fits into one of these seven categories, then it's allowed on Cholamoid. So what are the seven categories? So one is Tzarech Ochel, and we'll explain about these more later in depth. One is Tzarech Ochel Nefesh, or food needs, um, foods, um, cups, plates, pots and pans, things that are going to be used for food, um, baking dishes. If a person does a malacha for these purposes, it's it, this is the widest case of permissibility. Two is Tzarech Ochel Guf, something is really bothering a person's physical body. He's allowed to do it. Three is Maisa Hediyot Tzarech Amoid. If a person does a simple act for the needs of the moed, this is allowed. And at this point, we'll we'll speak about what's the difference between. This is a very important to understanding how the moed. There's really two types of meisim, two types of actions. This is called a meisa hediyot and a meisa umon. Um, does anyone have any um, familiarity with these terms, meisa hediyot, meisa umon? What they mean? Yeah, what does it mean? It's like the, the person, you know, the, you know, the worker does the, it's just a regular person could do it. Right. Right. Um, can you remind me your name, please? Yeah. Yaakov. So Yaakov is, is telling us to have solace between Maisa Hedyot and Maisa Uman. Maisa Hedyot is something that a lay person could do, a regular person is able to do it. And the Maisa Uman is literally a Maisa Uman, is an action that a professional is able to do. The Hadar I heard from Rabbi Miller um, and from Rabbi Miller from Sharon, as well as my Chavar of Ali Davis from Likud, is that a Maisa Uman requires precision, focusing, and training. Again, a Maisa Uman requires precision. You have to be precise while doing it. Focusing, you have to focus on what you're doing. And it requires advanced training. Whereas a Maisa Hedio is a simple act, doesn't require these things. It can be done without training, without so much focusing. Uh, Rabbi Heinemann gives a couple of examples for what's the difference between Maisa Hedio and Maisa Uman. Rabbi Heinemann's above Baltimore. Rabbi Heinemann looks at a certain couple parts of the car. There's a certain part of the car called an alternator. Are any of you into cars at all? You know what an alternator is? No. So apparently there's a part of a car of an alternator that is screwed in by two screws. And if the mechanic would show you, unscrew this screw, unscrew that screw, then any person could do it. This is called a Maisa Hedyot. I, the Uman, uh, the, the Hedyot, the simple person, couldn't even find the alternator in the car if it, if it was up to him. But the Maisa once an Uman shows him what it is, it's a simple act. Unscrewing something is something that doesn't require advanced focusing. And therefore, unscrewing the alternator is a Maisa Hedyot on Cholamoid. If a person had an issue with his alternator on, on his car on Cholamoid, and he needed his car for the Moid, he would be allowed to unscrew it. Um, now, there's another part of the car called, more famous part of the car called an engine. Apparently, an engine, in order to fix an engine, requires a lot of tzar, a lot of ion. It requires a lot of attention to detail, knowing what to do. It's a much more complex procedure. Rabbi Heinemann holds that Rabbi Heinemann holds that um, fixing an engine is a mice uman. And what's the difference in these two? It's if it's tzar hamoid. 
a person could need a car to drive somewhere on the Moed, wants to drive to Kailo, drive to the store, drive to the trip. So if he has to fix the alternator, which is a Maisa Hediot, this is allowed. Maisa Hediot, Litzar HaMoed is Mutter. But if he needs to fix the engine, even though he needs the car for the Moed, but since it's a Maisa Uman, Chazal said a Maisa Uman, a professional act, Litzar HaMoed is not allowed. So that's the third category of Heter, Maisa Hediot Litzar HaMoed. Um, fourth category is Davar Avid, potential loss. This is also allowed if a person has something and it's going to potentially be lost from him. The, like the case in, that's discussed in the Gemara is like if a person owns a field and it's about to get flooded, and a person's able to divert the flood from the field, even though this may involve a malacha, but since if a person has a field, that's something that he really has, and it's going to be taken from him, it's going to get lost, then it's um, he's allowed to do a malacha for it. This is in contrast with something called a, a revach, which is a profit, which means that a person has something and he's trying to gain even more, like he's trying to gain a profit. For most ordinary profits, a person's not allowed to do malacha on, on Cholomite. And if we have time later, we'll talk about more business. If a person has the opportunity to buy something at a discount later on, there's certain halachas about that. Fifth case is Polish in Lomalachal. Um, if a worker does not have anything to eat, which means he doesn't have basic needs for Yanta for him and his family, he's allowed to go to work. Um, also, if a person is at, at risk of getting fired, if he doesn't work on Cholomite, like he already took off first days of Pesach, second days of Pesach, probably if he takes off Cholomite, he's going to get fired, he's allowed to work. Because then he'll become someone who has nothing to eat. So therefore, he's allowed to work. Six is Tarf Mitzvah. If it's a need for a mitzvah, um, on Cholomite, like for example, those who put on tefillin on Cholomite, first needs to write himself tefillin, that's Tzarech Mitzvah. And seven is Tzarech Radin, if needs for the tzibur, if the public needs something to be done. Okay, do we have any comments or questions so far, or any chilas? Someone might get fired if he takes a Cholomite. That's called Sheim Malachim. I get another job. You might get able to get another job. Okay. Can you remember your name, your name, your name please? Okay, so Mesha asked a question. He said, so very nice a person who's uh presently employed. And so this is not the only job in the world. If he gets fired from this job, he can get another job. I could say it's not so easy to get another job. Um Okay, I don't have a clear answer to that, but I all I can say is that Hazal didn't feel like a person needed to be so motion fresh to give up Cholomoid in order to in order to do that work. I mean, it could also be like a Dover of it, maybe like he's he he has he has this job, so this is something in his hands, and then if he loses it, that's a loss. Um well, you're saying, but it's not, you know, not like you said it, it might be right. in That's true, that's true. I did say that. Um Okay, it could also be that maybe for the maybe for the interim, for the time between he has jobs, he may not have anything. Fine, but this is a good question. I'll try to ask myself this question. Okay. Okay, now now that we've discussed the four areas of Hetzer, now there are four areas, I'm sorry, now that we've discussed seven areas of Hetzer, now, within these seven areas, there are four categories of Isser that may apply to some of the seven, seven categories. So we'll discuss some more. First category is called Tircha Meruba. What's Tircha Meruba? Is an unusual effort for this act. So, Machav Rebelli Davis told me from the Taste of Spread, first pack of Ambassador, first pack of Moikotan at the end, that the Gemara is a case of a field that needs to be tended to. And there's there are two ways how to fix the field. One requires less tircha, and one requires more tircha. That's more effort. And so it says that if you fix the field in a way that requires more effort, then this is called tircha meruba. So I have one to describe from here that tircha meruba doesn't just mean it's like a heavy job. That that's not necessarily a problem. 
But if it's unusual for this Misa, you're doing this action in a way that requires more Tircha, that's called Tircha Ruba, and that may be prohibited on Chalamar. So, for example, a person is like doing laundry or vacuuming the carpet. Um, so these actions may require some tircha, but it's not called tircha mru because for a laundry or for vacuuming the carpet, this is par for the course. This is what the job usually takes. It's only if you're doing an action and the way you're doing it, it requires more effort than usual, then that's that's considered tircha mru. My example of laundry is not the best because usually laundry is, is also on chalom but there are some cases it's mutter. Um, second case, which we spoke about already, is called a mice uman. If it's a professional act that requires focusing or precision, then this may be prohibited. Three, another issue is a person does actions before hensia, certain actions on cholamoid, like um, for for example, those involve whatever person is allowed to sell certain items on cholamoid, meaning to a pitsina like by like closing down some of the window shades. So some malachas may not be done before Hesia in public. And the fourth issue is Kivi Malach Lamoid, which means that person was holding by Arav Yantif. He's like, I know I have to do this malacha and I have plenty of time. But I'll just I'll just do it on Khalmai. So in certain cases he, there's a kanas and he's not allowed to do the act on Khalmai. Um, okay, do you have any questions about these these four four issues with Malach and Cholamai? Okay, let's start with the main categories. The first is Ochel Nefesh, food. This is the most leaning category. If a person needs to prepare food on Cholamai, this is Mutter for Tircham Ruba, even if it's like a unusually large effort. It's allowed. Nice uman. If a person is doing a in a, like a type of baking that is classified as a mice uman, that like only an expert knows how to do, or that requires precision and focus, mice uman is allowed for ochel nefesh. And even kivim alachul lemoid is mutter, meaning like the like the mission board talks about like by yantif even. There are certain foods that a person can prepare on Yantif because it'll taste better on Yantif than if you prepared it on Arab Yantif. But this is if the food would have tasted just as good on Arab Yantif, and he's like, No, I'm not going to make it right now. I'll have, I'll do it on Cholamide. So even though it's Kivim al Cholamide, this is still, still Mutter on Cholamide. He can make it on Cholamide. Um, some more Hitarian for, for Ochel Nafesh. Uh, if a person person has some food at home that's like frozen and he would need to bake it or cook it, which is a malacha. Or he could go to butchery, Zadie's crown and buy ready-made food. So maybe you should tell them, don't, don't do the malacha and go buy the ready-made food. You know, really the halacha is that person is allowed to make his own food at home. He doesn't have to go out and buy food. He can do a malacha and make his own food. Even if he already has food, but the food he's going to make is more schmack. It's tastier. He's allowed to make the tastier food. And he can make more than enough food. So if he's, if there's, if it's like mommy, tati, and eight kids, so he can, they can make for enough for like an extra few people in case other guests show up or they get more hungry or just so people don't feel like they're with some, some, they have like just the exact amount. Person's allowed to make more than enough food on Kalamar. You're making more just, just because it's easier to make make a lot at once so to make so let's say all you need is, is a certain amount but you'll make double amount just because it's easier if you make it all in one shot to last for after yeah that's that that's mature as long as um Jacob is saying what if you make make a certain food that is going to last you longer but the general way of making the food is only is to make it all in one go then that that's permitted um for example like in my family, we make a gefilte fish loaf and we only eat half of it. So the we can make the whole gefilte fish as long as we're going to be eating some of it on, on the moi. The thing of the question. And then as far as machshire ochel nafesh, which is items that are used to prepare the food, like pots, pans, forks, knives. So say like a person's 
knife needed to get sharpened because it was getting dull. So this is allowed on Cholamoid. And it has some of the other Hatayrim, like Tercham Ruba, even if it's an unusual Tercha, it's allowed. And you can fix like you can fix your knife with a Maisa Uman, professional act. However, here, Kiv Malach Cholamoid is also. So if a person, this is like a big, this could come up like if a, if a person's oven breaks on Erev Yantish, and he's like, no, I got plenty of time, but I'll call the the Uman, I'll call the professional on Cholamoid, and I'll fix it on Cholamoid. There's a Knas, he's not allowed to choose the oven on Cholamoid. Can't, he can not allow, not allow, he could add, maybe he could, yeah, I don't think he could even get it fixed on Cholamoid, and he could, and he can't have it used. Um, so that's because Kivi Malach Cholamoid, if a person plans Malach on Moed for Machshiri Ochel Nefesh, for items that require, um, like for that help with food preparation, then a person cannot plan those malachas for the moid. So what are some examples of this malacha? Um, so we talked about baking, fixing a knife, um, cutting up vegetables, even though cutting up vegetables, if you cut it up thinly, is the malacha of tochin. But if you're going to be using the vegetables on, on the moid, this is allowed. Okay, do we have any any questions on the category of ochal nefesh about food needs? <laughs> okay, the second category is tzarche aguf, bodily needs. Um, I I discussed learning this this sugya up with through Rabbi Yonis Vel Sharon Rabbi Chassis, and the way he and I shot this up is that these are all significant disturbances of enjoyment of life that are classified as tzarche aguf, as we'll see. Things that really stare a person. Um, so the following cases are mutter, even though it's tircham ruba, it's like a unusually large effort for the act, and if they require a nice uman professional act. So first off, as far as healing, Rabbi Heinemann holds that all medical appointments are permitted on cholamide. This is to decide whether a person's sick, healthy, checkup, urgent care, dental, eye, whatever whatever the type of medical appointment is, um, or a person person goes to some sort of doctor for um, for other issues, um, this is all permitted on Solomon. It's all considered Tzarche Now, personally, yeah, it could be a Jewish, a Jewish doctor. Yeah. I mean, to me, I, I've had this child with like, um, most of these times are like for the person, are you allowed to go to the doctor? Yeah. But for the doctor himself, should he be working on cholamoid to help these people, or should he be taking off cholamoid and enjoying cholamoid? So um, I think that's that's I haven't asked Shaila, but I think it's a I think it's a good Shaila. Um, for good, it's probably if for good, then the 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 Yiddish doctor probably can't go to him, right? If there's other people, yeah. You're saying. You're saying if you're a, a Jewish doctor with non-Jewish patients. Right. So and there's other and there's also other doctors. And the other doctors. So I would say like this is that if I were a doctor, I would try to avoid scheduling on Cholamide for non-Jews. Mm -hmm. But if there's a, a doctor has like a walk-in practice that anyone is able to walk in at any time, then I would say this is like a store. That is selling items of tzar hamoid. For example, if there's a, a store that sells matzahs and people need matzahs for the last years of cholamoid, so there are such a store is allowed to be open. And the halacha is even if a guy comes in to buy the items, you're still allowed to sell a guy the items, even though it's not tzar hamoid of a yid. But my rav told me it's mishum eva because the guy will be upset, and there is some criteria in halacha for a guy being upset and us. Doing that's like a hetzer for Atzala to heal people on Shabbos. If I, if I, not, if a guy calls Atzala, um, does that answer your question? Okay, fine. So that's where behind me holds all medical appointments are allowed. Personally, I wouldn't, I don't think it's such a geschmack halamaid going to medical appointments, but make her day it is, it is allowed. Um, for Nashim, for women um, who apply makeup to their face, um, they may apply it directly to their body. 
and they may remove certain hairs. Then we get to some some household issues. Um, say it's it's like Pesach, early April, and the house is and the heat is broken. The house is cold, yeah. or it's Sukkot, like the middle of September, and the house is hot, and the heating broke or the air conditioning broke. So this is considered a, a significant share of, of enjoyment. And a person, if they're really uncomfortable, is allowed to call a professional, even a Jewish professional, to fix the heat or fix the air conditioning on Salome. If the house is dark, all the lights have gone out due to some, not some issue with the power company, but some issue with like the house, then um, the person can call an electrician to try to put the lights on because it's considered in halacha, like having... Bismanazet and not have any lights is considered a, a significant share. Um, if a person only has one basic kise, one bathroom at the house, and that bathroom is is not functional, then this is considered a major major issue. A person can call to fix one bathroom. But it sounds like if you have two bathrooms, then you should just use use the other one, even if it's a little more tircha to go up and down the stairs. But you should just use the one bathroom. I mean, I could I could definitely hear if there's a person who's if they're mobility impaired and it's like very hard for them to go up and down the stairs, maybe this, this would be allowed. But for an average person, would we'll just go to the one bathroom that's working. Um, if there's if there's one shower and a person needs it. So when we say needing a shower, we don't mean needing to take a shower look up at the seventh day of Yontif, because that's called Tsar Chamoid, and Mesa Uman Tsar Chamoid is Aser. A person cannot call a professional for something for the needs of the, of the Moid. But the way Rabbi Chess explained this to me was that, like, he holds Bisman um his Messiah said, everyone is considered an instantist with regards to taking showers. So um, people are very uncomfortable if they if they can't take a shower. So therefore, just like he holds, I mean, you could ask, hopefully you shouldn't have these showers for a while, but for an oval within sh in Shiva, Rabbi Chess holds an oval could take a shower because everyone's like an instantist, and the halacha is an instantist is allowed to take a shower within Shiva. So he holds also in Cholamoy that everyone is considered like they really need the shower. And if the shower breaks, then it'd be much to call an Uman to call a professional to fix the shower. He's like, why are you Um, I think he listens to Rabbi Shachter. So I'm actually I'm not a novel, so I don't... I mean, when I would, I, when I, would I would probably ask my Ralph, but I mean, I think he has, uh, he has serious people who he listens to, so I'm willing to say it over. Um, and last is, uh, gl glassy, glasses or hearing aids. Um, I see three of us in this room have glasses. Um, if we wouldn't have our glasses, then we probably wouldn't be able to learn so well, dive in, see around, drive. So glasses is a person can get his glasses fixed on, chal on chalamide and also hearing aids. If a person has hearing aids, he can get those fixed on chalamide. Um, who's... Um, who's joining us from the five one six last digits three five four? It's me, Oni. Oni. Yeah. Mechel calling. Or Mechel. Okay, Mechel. Like to welcome my chaver Mechel Jehovitz. Mechel had me over for the second days, and he had me for a suit as Cholamayim. So thank you very much for joining. Or Mechel, do you have any 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 horrors on what we said so far? No. Okay. Okay, the third category is called Tsar HaMoed. For the needs of the Moed, for the needs of Chol HaMoed, for the needs of Last of Yontif, there are some allowances, but not as much as the earlier cases about food needs or bodily needs. So here, for Tsar HaMoed, a person is allowed to put in some Tircha, some effort, but it needs to be worth it. If a person... Is putting forth like a huge effort and only getting a small gain, this is not allowed. The effort put forth for Tsar Hamoid needs to be worth the gain. Um, so, so for example, if a person is, this is my example, is that if a person wants to go on a Cholamoid trip and he wants to see some trees, which are not like the most beautiful trees, so he drives from Boston to Lakewood to see a couple of trees, which is really not going to give him such a maximum extent of anyways. So I would say this is like a lot of tircha and not much gain. 
this, this would not be allowed. But if he's driving to Liquid and he has like a meeting with like, and it's like a meeting like with, with Malkiel or David or, or like a truly tremendous opportunity, then driving five hours could be worth it. If he's going to have a really amazing call night shift. Um, one may act for his, for his or his fellow Jews tarchamoid. So, if a person is himself needs to go somewhere on the moid, or someone else in his family needs to go somewhere, another Jew, then this is allowed. Um, also, what's called machshiri tarchamoid, um, can are is also allowed. So, like a, a pen could be fixed. Like for per if there's a situation that a person is writing down um permitted permitted acts, like he's writing down Zivri Torah and he needs to fix his pen, like his pen broke, then he would be allowed to fix the pen. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we'll we'll get to this later. Zivri Torah, we'll get to this later. Um my so um Okay, I could definitely hear that you could there's room to buy five pen. Um like buy like by laundry, a person is supposed to buy new clothes instead of do laundry, for example. But if it could be driving pistols, that's driving. That is, but it's a sarcomoid, that's why it's monster. Maybe fixing the pen feels so once that's the Um but if you're but the thing is, driving to the store is really like the only way to get there. I guess you could walk, but that's that's like more tircha. Um, whereas buying a pen, you could you could get the same pen just by just by buying it. So I could hear that maybe there's room to to buy a new pen. Um, Mesu uman is Osir. So this is a big one, like we spoke about earlier. If a person does a, a professional action that requires precision and focus and training, um, then this is this is Osir. So um, we'll get more into writing later, but there are certain types of writing which are considered Maisa um, Uman, like um, calligraphy. Calligraphy involves very some type, like fancy or precise type of writing, not like our type of writing, which is where a person's not as mock, but not as careful. So if a person would use very fancy handwriting to make a sign that says Gutmoid, this would not be allowed because fancy handwriting is called a Maisu Uman. A lot of times people could write calligraphy So, I mean, the Ramad talks about, like, by sewing, that even though, like, most people know how to sew, the, the fact that a number of people know how to do it is not necessarily a criteria, whether it's a Maisa Umar or Maisa Hedyun. It's whether a person needed to be trained, and right now, does it require precision and focusing? Um, but I'll try to get back to you on, on this question. <laughs> Um, and the other case that we spoke about earlier was like if a person's fixing the engine, um, which is a Maisa Uman, even though he needs his car, let's start this is not allowed. Um, however, if a person does a Maisa Hedio, which enhances one's joy, this can be mutter. So I had a handle with Rabbi Chaim Shabbos one of the post coming months about this, I asked him the following two shilas. First shilas is, person is going, um, person is going apple picking on Cholomite. And he's picking, picking apples. And he picks more apples than he will need to eat on Yantif. Is this allowed? We're familiar, picking off apples is the malach of Kotzer on Shabbos, detaching from its source of growth. Rabbi Shabbos told me this is usher. Person's only allowed to pick apples, coffee, what he's going to eat. Then I asked Rabbi Shabbos, 
a lot of times people are picking apple. Let's say we go to the the uh, for a homage, they go to apple picking. You said, oh, so they're not picking it because they want the apples. They're picking it for like fun. Right. So Rabbi Shabbos told me that I'll I'll contrast this with the second case. Second case is I asked Rabbi Shabbos if a person is driving a car and he's he just he enjoys the ride. He's not going anywhere in particular. He just enjoys enjoys the act of driving. Is this allowed? Rabbi Shabbos told me, yes, this is a motor. This is allowed. So I asked him, what's the difference in these two cases? That apple picking, just for the fun of it, is also. Driving, for the fun of it, is motor. So let's chat. So he said that apple picking is kotzer, which is a true malacha on Shabbos. It's one of the 39 malachas, kotzer. Driving, Rabbi Shabbos told me, is not a derisa. Driving is individual sparks flaring in the car. Driving is individual sparks flaring in the car. And um, there, it's not shalkayama. They don't last. And therefore, it's not a derisa. So therefore, if a person is doing a true malacha, like picking apples, or another case would be, if a person is like baking food, not for anyone to eat it, but just because he enjoys baking food, then, then even though he enjoys it, this would not be allowed. And even though it's a even though it's a nice head, it's a simple act, but it's not considered tar If someone practices driving, he's learning how he's going to get his license. Yes. So. So the actor is asking, how could a person practice driving on Solomoid? So the way, the permitted way to practice driving on Solomoid is to go somewhere that the family needs. But if, if he's just doing it, if, let's say as a, the worker is with him and he just drives it. And yeah, it's not. That's not considered the reality. Let's even go to Yeah, so so let's do this one child at a time. So so might she saying maybe it's a duffer of it. So that that is legitimate Shiloh. Meaning if a person, for example, has driver's ed that he schedules, it's like once a week on Wednesdays. And it happens to be this Wednesday is Khalamar. And it could be if he doesn't show up this Wednesday, then he'll he'll lose all the effort that he gained. Then there is there's grounds that could be considered a duffer of it. You're saying every Wednesday, but let's say he schedules it the afternoon that it should be done. Yeah, that's 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 not allowed. Because well, it's, it's yeah, because it's uh, it's he, he's doing a mice ahead yet, not with Sarfa Moid because he's not going to be able to eventually drive on the Moid. You might be doing this next year. This year, it takes time. That's okay, that's a that's a fair point, but I think for for Halamoid, I mean, just like by same thing as by Hilcha Shabbos, a person. He's not allowed to do hachana for one Shabbos to an extra. Just because he's going to do the melacha, just because he's going to do the act, act on the next Shabbos, just because he's going to need it for next Shabbos. It's like uh, every I think it's looked at every everything is for its time. So, so but let's say he also enjoys driving. I Meaning, so he likes. He, Meaning, so, he, so the, there's a there for enjoying if if you like driving just. So if he likes driving and he takes the test, you know, and he, and he takes the, and he, whatever he, he practices for the test. Yeah, I would say that would be allowed. I'm not of saying if a person, person doing two things, one, he enjoys driving, and two, he's he's getting better, and I would say that's permitted. Um, because he can he can have that as a Zikr Kavana. Zikr Kavana is that he's doing it because he enjoys driving. Yeah, it's for sure not why. Let's say he's, he's not doing it because he enjoys it, but he also does enjoy it. Okay, I I could I could definitely hear why that that he should be permitted. I was told specifically by the case if he's going somewhere his family needs and he didn't any practice driving. I think we could link up the other case as well and say just like a person who enjoys driving is allowed to do it, so to a person who's enjoying driving and practicing, I think would also be allowed to. So so if it's so if it's practicing, if it's practicing. If, if he's practicing and he's it's double or and he's not doesn't enjoy it, then I'm done. 
because let's say he's gonna whatever he's gonna go away for he won't be able to do take the to the test till like a long time later. He's so that will come out with the Soviet Usher. Um well I'm not sure the answer to your question, but it could be it's totally on the following shot that I saw in the safer. He handles if there's a worker who's entitled to a certain amount of vacation days for the year. For example, he can take off 15 days vacation. So he, he's already taken off Pesach, Sukkis, Bashana, Yom Kippur, Shavuos, depending on whether they fall during the week or fall on weekends. And he has like he has like four vacation days left. So he wants to go to Eretz in the summertime. So is he is he mechuyev to take off on Cholamayit and thereby he won't have any more vacation days to go to Eretz Shal? Or is he allowed to work and it's like a dover of it because you view it as like he had the opportunity to take off in the summertime and now he's just preserving that by working on Cholamayit. Like he's working on Cholamayit to preserve his time off on Cholamayit and see if for black starting in with the Shiloh. Didn't, didn't give an answer. So... So your Shaila Yaakov was if a person um is not going to be able to like practice driving or take the test after after the moid because he's gonna be in Yeshiva. So is that like I don't know, do you do you think there's any similarities in these two cases? In that case, what was that case? That was... Yeah, the person wants yeah, to take off yeah, vacation. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, well, there, the reason is because of the vacation. I mean, here, he... He serves to make sure when later night, when he has to go through all this thing, you know? I mean, if he if he doesn't know that, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know that. He has to do it before pace and after pace and and I mean, he wants to get it done by the end before it goes away. And he's gonna go away for a year for the next pace. So we'll have to like start a little thing again for the next the next year. If, if we we'll like forget how to do it. So okay, I could hear that. Maybe if he's gonna like lose his skills, then yeah. maybe that'd be tougher. I mean. But again, it's important to keep in mind, are we handling Tzar HaMoid or are we handling Dabar Aved? A few minutes ago, we were talking about Tzar HaMoid. We are saying he, he enjoys driving. Now, if we're talking about Dabar Aved, like missing an opportunity to practice in the future, losing out on, on the skills he's already gained, then I could hear this is going to be Dabar Aved. <laughs> and hopefully with this session, we're not coming to pass in all Shilas, but hopefully just to be more certain situations and know what Shilas to ask. Okay, next case. Davra Avid, potential loss. We already started to talk about this case. So Davra Avid has this like interesting rule that if you're if a person has something principally that he has and it's threatening to get lost, he's allowed to do a Maisa Uman, uh, an act that requires precision training focus, but only commensurate with the effort. So if he's going to save a, a big loss, then he can do a big effort. But if he's only going to save a little loss, then he can only do a little effort. And even if he has a suffix, maybe he'll save it or not, he's still allowed to do it. But the thing is, that's for Maisa Uman, but is it interesting, Will? I don't fully understand this. But if a person is doing a Maisa Hedia, a simple act, then he could do more, more Malacha than will save him. He can put forth like a big tircha to do a mice head yet and save like a small amount. Um, <laughs> a person is also allowed to fix an item with which he will save a dover of aid. Like if a person has some device that needs to save his field, he can fix that device and then save his field. Um, when a person has a Dover oven, it's best, if possible, if he should wait until after Yontif to fix it. If it's not going to get broken anymore, it's not going to get any worse, 
then it's best you should wait until after the to fix it. Rabbi Lev told me a case of of Dover of Dover Adi, which is that but first off, the safer safer brings a case that say a person has a, a shoe and there's a rip in his shoe, but he's still able to wear it. So if he could wear it until after the second days of Yantif, then and it's not gonna get a bigger hole, he should just keep wearing it as is. But if the hole is gonna get bigger and either He's he's not going to be able to fix it. Is the shoe's going to get torn, or the way every left told me is that it's going to be more tircha to fix it later, or maybe it's going to be more expensive to fix it later. Then there's a davar avi because the person's he he'll lose he'll, he's losing out on his tircha that he'll have to expend later, or he's losing out on the money that he'll have to expend later, or he's losing out on the whole shoe. So those cases are uh, in those cases the person would be allowed to fix the shoe on the mode. I do think that instead of fixing the shoe, if he has a second pair of shoes, even if it's not as nice, as long as it's not like a bazillion, then I think it would be better he should wear his his other shoes. For example, if a person's Shabbos shoes has a hole and it's not wearable, but it could get fixed, I I think I think that a person should wear his weekday shoes for the rest of Yontif and then fix the Shabbos shoes after, after Yontif. Um, for Davar Avid, Kivi Malachal Lamoid is Usr. So if a person has this item that, like if his shoes got ripped Arab Yantif, and he could could have called the shoe repairman, but he didn't do it, so he's not allowed to call him on, on Chalamoid. Because Kivi Malachal Lamoid, planning to save a Davar Avid on the Moid is Usr. Planning beforehand to save it on the Moid is Usr. Whenever a person is a dover obviously you try to be minimized tircha, do as little as little effort as possible. And and potential gain is not considered dover So if a person so if a person has a, a a routine sale, like the store, they give 20% off discount like every other week. So this is this is not considered a, a this is not considered a dover obvious. Okay, do you have any questions about Dover Avi? <laughs> if what happens? Yeah. Why would that cause Bizarre? Yeah. Um well mission Avo says that. Lilmod Amnathalasos is a higher madrega than just Lilmod or Lilmod Lamid. So the Iker goal of the Tara is to carry out the mitzvah. So I don't so I don't think Bitl Tara is a Khajman. But you can ask Rabbi about that. It's a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah to fix the shoe. Well, for Dover uh, what we were I mean, I guess you could handle the few shadows with fixing shoes. You could hold you could say it's a it's a tsar tarcha moed to fix your shoe if you're gonna wear it in the moed. But for Tarcha Moed, Maisa Uman is also. You can only do it with a Maisa Hedid. Mm -hmm. The thing is, for a Dover Avid, you do a Maisa Uman. But still, for a Dover Avid, that you could, I'm saying that you could wear a different pair of shoes or you could fix these shoes after the Moed, then it's best not to tend to the Dover Avid on on Um, Okay. Okay, I want to make sure we get to the sugya of Ksiva. Big sugya on Cholamoy, writing on Cholamoy. Okay, so we spoke about the two types of writing. There's basically like fancy writing and then regular handwriting. We're not especially macbid to make every letter super neat. We do it nice enough that we could read it. Maybe other people could read it. Um, even fancy writing is permitted on food. So it happens to be my birthday is on Cholamoy. So if someone were to make me a cake and write in fancy writing on the cake, happy birthday, Yoni, this would be allowed. Because Maisa Uman, which is like fancy writing, is Maisa Uman, Litzarif Ochel Nefesh, for food needs, is 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 mutter. What? It's not a need. The cake is the same one. It's written in fancy writing. Okay, I think we have a pretty liberal definition for need as far as food. I mean, we spoke about earlier if food's going to be tastier. Um... So you're saying it's not going to be tastier if there's... 
But but the but the the icing does have a taste. It's not like he's writing on like some people write for Shabbos before Shabbos they write like a sticker and then they take off the sticker. Like the food, it, it you are gonna taste the icing and it does taste good. That's true, but uh, but a miso. But there's a reason why in the store they write fancy because it it adds to the simple to have fancy handwriting. That's like, it, you're saying it adds to the eating. You have more simple than the eating. Well, I, I think because because the frosting has taste and you will be eating it, therefore it's called turkle nefesh. But therefore you're allowed to make it in that shape, in that fancy shape. Yeah, and then, and I think while you're doing turkle nefesh, then you can while you're doing turkle nefesh, you can do it in a way that's a mice uman, which is by using fancy writing. Um, for Tark Ochel Nefesh, a person is allowed to do Kivim Malach to Lamoid. You can plan the Malach on the Moid for food. I think for the question. Um, okay, but we spoke about like making a the Tmoid sign because that's not Tark Ochel Nefesh, it's only the Tark Moid. Mesa Uman, the Tark Moid is Usser. So, first, we're not be able to make a fancy writing to make a good Moid sign. Okay, if a person wants to write a... But if he writes the shinui and he writes in a fancy way, you hear that? I mean, he, he makes a little fancy sign, the shinui. Well, I mean, what are you talking about, shinui? Like, he uses, he uses the other hands? Yeah, and he writes the left hand. Right. I'm, I'm not super expert in hel shinuiim, but there are different types of shinuiim. There's one that's a shinui in the... The way you do it, like doing it with the wrong hands, then there's a shinui in, in the results, like by Hilchus Cholamoid, the person sews stitches at a diagonal instead of straight. Um, so I'm not sure that if you, Lamaisa, did a fancy handwriting and you did it and it looked nice, just you happen to do it with the other hand, I'm not sure that would be Mutzer. Okay, so if a person writes a, a letter which will be received on Cholamoid, um, this may be allowed. Like if a person would write a letter to my, like my parents my write letters. Okay, now the big sugya. Writing down different Torah on Cholamayim. Okay, so, and this is a very well-discussed sugya, so what does is, what is Eilam have to say about this on writing down different Torah on Cholamayim? It's a Mutter Yeah, can you remind me your name, please? Naftali. Yeah, why is it related to Naftali? What are you going to forget? Okay, so Naftali says one of the reasons of the Mishnah Bura. Writing down Divrei Torah on Solomon is mutter because a person could forget it. It's a Davar Avid. Mishnah Bura says, In Davar Avid Gedolim Yizu. There's no bigger lost item than having Divrei Torah and not forgetting it. Baruch Hashem, this year I had the opportunity of being by my Shiva and Moshe of Katzin for the first Seder. So the first name of Solomon, I wrote down as many as I could remember of the Hanhagos, the way he the way he did his seba, the way he held the matzahs, what he said by the seder, I wrote them down for an Aftali's reason. Uh, I might forget it if I would wait until after after the second seder, so I might forget, either forget it in Gansin or forget it. What? Five tenths. Why don't we say your story that was in the club when we last last? Say more. We should say that you can't write it down because learn Tiger's on the last lesson. So, so it, it, better you should lose it. What, what's the point of having it in the return? Well, it's Luminatar, what's the point of having it? Well, it's like more than Lima. Saying maybe it's more. <laughs> Writing it in the return is like, now yeah, you have it. Let's say in Absolute space, when a person would, uh, if a person would go to the store now, if, if a person would would uh, fix his shoes later, then he's not going to have time to learn. So in that case, you said that, yeah, but even though he's not going to have time to learn, that's good for the, the mitzvah is to do this. Well, whenever that's not. But, so let's say he could write later. Let's say later he could write. We don't draw it. Okay, so, so now we'll come to the second star of the mission, bro. The second star of the mission was as follows. That on, say, 
in, for example, in my case, I, I heard some Divrei Torah from Arashib, the first Seder. Now it's Cholamoid. So Cholamoid is his man to write down Divrei Torah from the first Seder. I, maybe I should do it, I should have done it like, like, Lamashal now, like it's Parshish Kedoshim. I have plenty of time I could write down. Say say I wasn't going to forget. Say we don't have the first Savara. If I was going to remember with clarity all the reasons. So Mishra has his Farah. He says, right now it's Parshish Kedoshim. What am I supposed to be busy with? I'm supposed to be busy with the Machalik Rashi and the Ramban about Kedoshim to you. I'm not supposed to be busy with what my Rashiva said two weeks ago at the Seder. Right now I'm supposed to be Machadish, new Divrei Torah. If I were to chazer over what the Rosh Hashiva said, then I would need to like chazer it over in my mind and then write it down. And then that's a bit of my learning of Kedoshim to you. So, so because of all that, I'm allowed to write on Cholamoid as a Dovra Aved to save my future time after after Cholamoid. So, that does that, does that answer, your, answer your question, Misha? Do you anything, anything more you want to say? No. Okay. Okay, another child that can come up for those who have cell phones or computers is um typing or texting. So where does typing or texting fall on the chain? Is it a Mesa Uman, Mesa Hediot, something else? It's Mesa all right, so in general, the post can say that typing or texting is a nice head yet. So we wouldn't write it for mamish no reason. Okay, thank you. So like we wouldn't 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 write it like for mamish no reason, but if you're writing someone with Tamoid, or if I'm like emailing people to come to my shear, then it's our Tamoid, my writing email would be much of a send in. Um another case that comes up is um not writing but taking pictures. So what would you say if you go on a Cholomite trip and you want to take some pictures? Is it, is this allowed? I assume it's allowed. Yeah, Siakam says it's allowed. Why is it allowed? It doesn't. I mean, it's, it's a matter of... We'll, we'll be there, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, some say the photography is like a... I mean, we wouldn't we wouldn't take a, do photography on Shabbos. No, so, so what's the problem there? Ksiva? Yeah, some sort of Ksiva, Tsura... And maybe the electricity. Maybe less electricity, but maybe if you use a, a non electric camera. So maybe. Not a Right, so there's much like it's if printing out pictures of Mesa Uman, but usually taking pictures is not considered a Mesa Uman. Let's say he does it in a, in a fancy way. He takes a whole professional camera that can be. Mice, only, this is what I was thinking of mice and mice. Okay, so, so yeah, is, is mice and uman, could it be if you use a special device? It's like a device with uman. Or let's say you hire a special, there's someone that says he's a photographer and he's professional, he has, and he's a very professional one, and he makes a little bit fancy picture. So, and he's whatever, is he is. So, is he allowed to do that? In yeah. So, this safer brings down that a person, even though it's mutter to take a family picture if the family's not often together, it's mutter to take a picture if you the family goes to a, a certain event or a certain place that they're not usually at. But he brings that to specifically go to an Uman to have professional pictures taken is not allowed. So, even though this may be like the only time the family's together and they want to have nice pictures. So I, I don't really know the svar. Maybe you're saying it's like a, because they're using like a camera of an uman. I hear what you're saying. Um, but my ref told me that if a person like enjoys taking pictures, then this is, this is allowed. I think it's for the same reason because maybe like taking pictures is not like such a strong blocha as much as like coats there is or maybe baking. Um, I asked Mayrav because his daughter is an expert artist if she's allowed to do artwork on, on Yantif, on Cholamayr. And he wanted to say that it's like driving because like it was just like every hand says by driving. Driving is press the gas, press the brake, steer it. Every action is like a simple action. 
so to drawing, you you like make the marker go down this way, left, right. You gonna ours? Yeah, I, I still don't have a hundred percent clear my because then I would think that calligraphy should also be considered a nice head here, but I've definitely heard calligraphy is a nice woman. So um I'm not I'm not hundred percent, but this is definitely not where you to ask Shia, like if a person is is doing Malacha just just to enjoy it. Because it seems like based on Rabbi Shabbos Adar, it's totally on what Madriga of Malacha person is doing. Okay, who's um who's joining us last three digits nine zero zero? Hello. Okay, so, what? Hello. Hi. Ellie. Hi, it's Ellie. Yeah. Hi, Ellie. Okay, I'd like to welcome Ellie Miller from the Five Towns, my chaver, for joining us. Um, Ellie, you have any any shadows in what we've discussed so far? Um, not sure. Maybe I'll think of later. Okay, sounds good. We'll be in touch later. Um, so we have about an hour. So either we can stop here. We do have like some more to cover. If you want, we could talk about hair cutting. Laundry and fingernail cutting, um, or if if you want to hold it here, that's fine because we have done an hour. Okay, gonna go. Mm -hmm. Fine. Sure. Okay, Shkaya. Okay, Shkaya. Okay, Shkaya. Okay, Shkaya. Okay, Shkaya. Um. Okay. Um. Fine. So we'll we'll try to cover the last few areas, which is um three kind of related isurim. Um, one is hair cutting, one is fingernail cutting, and the second one is laundry, and the third one is is fingernail cutting. So hair cutting is lamaisa. It's one of the hardest to understand malachas on in Cholamoid because of the salas. We already discussed hair cutting. We already discussed that if a person is doing an action for the needs of the moed, and it's a Mesa Hedyot, it's a simple action, then this is allowed. So hair cutting should be under that category. Just snip a hair or use a, some sort of a machine. It's a Mesa Hedyot, simple act, and it's a Tsar Chamoid. So well, what's the issue? So Chazal felt it was so important that we should come into the first days of the Moed Looking, looking our best. Okay, Shkai, really, thank you for coming. Um, so it's it's so important for us to for us to be looking our best on the first day of Yantif when Yantif comes in. That Chazal answered us; they prohibited us from shaving or taking haircuts on Cholamayim. Now you're going to ask maybe if a person shaved on erev Yantif. So then he should be allowed to shave again on Cholamoid. But no, the the Torah, or the Chazal, they said that because we want to make super sure that you'll cut your hair before the first days, so even if you cut your hair before the first days, people might not know that you cut your hair, and therefore, we're not going to allow you to cut your hair on Cholamoid. So hair cutting is not allowed on Cholamoid, even though it's... However, there are some allowances. One allowance is, is if a person is like combing or braiding their hair, like sometimes you see people on the subway, they're like they're like combing their hair. This is this is allowed, even though some hairs might. I think I think even though some hairs might fall out. Uh, if a person got a haircut erev yantif and they missed a spot, he can cut off that spot on cholamoid. If a woman needs to trim a few of her hairs for tzniyus purposes, this is allowed. And also, if a woman is going to um, wants to cut her hair before going to the mikvah, this may be allowed. Next case is washing clothes. Um, washing clothes is another pella. Um, Lahar doing a wash. It's not a tircham ruba. It's a regular regular effort. It's a tzar hamoid. Could even be like the tzar mitzvah to have clean clothes for yontif. But. Um, Chazal answered washing clothes because again they said we want to make super sure that people have clean clothes Arab Yantif and if people might say oh I could do it on Cholamoy then they might have dirty clothes for the first days of Yantif so this is 
Sefer Chazal answered washing flows on Cholamoid. A person not allowed to do laundry on Cholamoid. Um, however, certain types of washings are, are allowed. One is children's clothes. If a children has clothes that get soiled all the time, these those can be washed. Spot cleaning. I uh, may be allowed if a person has like a stain on on like his shirt, he can clean the stain. And if a woman needs white clothes for needed purposes, she may she may be allowed to wash these clothes. Um, Rabbi Gams discussed with me uh, Shver Shiloh that came up. He said he didn't give me a clear answer for this, but someone came to him with a Shiloh that um his son had white shirts which were cleaned before Yantif. But they all got stained on like during the Seder when he was drinking wine. And now he's out of clothes. And so what should you do in this case? So Robert Miller told me that if a person has dirty clothes, it's better that he should purchase new clothes rather than do laundry. However, the father in the story, he said he was uh saying a shy of Hefsid Mamun, he said it's forty dollars a shirt. Maybe he wasn't in such position to make such expenditures. So he was asking Rabbi Gams if he would be allowed to wash his son's shirts along with younger children's clothes that he's allowed to wash. So I, I don't have an answer to the Shiloh, but just to hear some of the studium, some of the factors about um, laundry on Shabbos, laundry on Cholomoy versus buying new clothes. And as far as fingernail cutting, um, fingernail cutting is the most lenient out of these three. The etzim and sura is the same thing. We want people to cut fingernails before yantif, but if you cut them before yantif, you can cut them again on cholamoid. Or it could be even if you ran out of time to cut them on cholamoid. On erev yantif, you could cut them on cholamoid. Or if a person always cuts their fingernails on erev shabbos, erev yantif, then they could cut them on cholamoid. Um, also, if a woman cuts her nails before going to the mikvah, she may be able to cut them. Okay, so now that we've discussed about what to and not to do on Cholomoid, um, I'd like to share what the Mishnah Bura says that we actually should do on Cholomoid if we're not busy with these malachas. So the Mishnah Bura says we should be doing basically two things. He says, Ochlem b'shosin, we should eat and drink, and we should be yigei and batayra. We should be immersed in the in Torah study. That's what we should be doing on Cholomoid. Have good food and good drink, and eat on and 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 be involved in in Torah study. Um, Baruch Hashem, I've been so to be at the Boston Kola several times. It's been this manu. It's a very stark called Taira. In the mornings, people mash behind the words of the Mishnah Bura. Um, so it's like that in Shibud all the five towns also. I'm sure many other places. Uh, many people have the custom of going on trips. Cholamoid is a way to as a way to enjoy the moed especially going out and seeing the Bria, seeing nature. Um, and, and now that we've, now that we've completed Cholomoid and we're, we're going off into the, we're going off into the spring, into the summer. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to take the lessons that we, that we learned on, on Yontif, Pesach, Zaman, Cherusenu, take them with us into, take them with us into, um, the spring and into the summer, and um, and I want to wish everyone uh, a good day. And Shukrach, thank you for coming. And Mitch Sem next next Cholamoid or even next next sense of in us, we should be able to celebrate it in Yerushalayim, uh, with the with the whole Klal Yisrael. Okay, gotten.